My next uh, deadline project that is historical is um, for next week, Monday. It is Wednesday. The costume that I'm making for this project is for a movie. I am actually going to be an extra in a um, historical film. And in one particular part of the movie, there is a flashback to 1899, uh, 1900. And I was alerted to this uh, acting opportunity by uh, um, a local museum that I volunteer at. And I, uh, of course, want to be in a movie, even if I'm an extra, I don't care. Um, but I, uh, um, you get to provide your own costumes, and they said late Victorian. Okay, so I provided pictures of the brown poplin, which probably most of you have seen, um, and then a couple other bustle dresses too, including this teal one that I made, um, and then this pink one, which I also made, worn by my friend Karina in this particular picture. And so I provided those three, and then I started talking to the gal who was approving the costumes, and she said, and I asked her what year this flashback is supposed to take place in. And she said 1899 to 1900. And uh, for those of you who know anything about Victorian, uh, clothing, you will know that Victorian fashion changed every five years. <laughs> I realized that I did not have any turn-of-the-century outfits because of all these bustle dresses that I made um, are more around 1880, 1885, maybe 80s, no, no, nothing past 86. So I'm about 15 years off as far as my costumes go. And yes, I could rent one or I could um, borrow one, and but it's like, I, I really have no excuse to not make one. So tonight I'm going to uh, Joanne Fabrics again, see if I can find uh, the fabric that I need to make, uh, uh, see if I can find the fabric to recreate this gown. Um, I found it online last night. I was staying up late researching um, what dresses from 1900 looked like. It's not that I didn't know, but I wanted to get obviously a little bit more. Um, and this particular gown I found, um, it has pretty cool history actually they date it to the year 1900 um they figure it was made by a working class woman who uh wanted a best dress probably for sunday church which is the part of the uh, film shoot that i'm going to be um doing on monday which is going to be at uh, heritage hill um, up in green bay heritage hill is a historical organization that um built a whole bunch of uh, time appropriate buildings to victorian era um and you know kind of to capture the essence of uh, the first settlers in Wisconsin and in the Green Bay area specifically. So they have church, they have uh, school, hospital, um, anything, Civil War, anything through that era, those kind of buildings. So we're gonna be filming in the chapel and I'm so excited. So I had to find a dress uh, that, that was actually from that period that was used for that purpose. Now the first dress I found um, was this. I love this picture. I so wanted to make this dress, but um, I had the little voice in the back of my head going, no, this isn't right, because usually in the early 1900s when ladies um, got together for socials in the afternoon, most of them would wear white, and you can see from pictures like this, uh, I, it, 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 they probably didn't wear this to church, um, so I just knew, I'm like, oh, crap, I really want to make this, but it looks like I'm going to have to uh, dig a little deeper. So then I found this dress, um, which was on the fancier side, um, but then we read the footnotes and it was speculated to be a wedding dress. So <laughs> it's really frustrating because I really like this one, but then I just dug a little bit deeper. I thought, Jordan, you can probably find something better. So I found that this actual dress dated from 1900, um, made by a working woman to probably go to church, um, very, um, uh, important social functions that kind of thing so I figured this dress is probably the one I should recreate now as far as um, colors and type of fabrics go it's a chambray I believe it was uh, from what I remember tonight we're going to Joanne's to see what I can find and uh, yeah so I got a few days to make this thing it shouldn't be too hard uh, just as long as I find the materials so um, yeah I'm going to buy a turtleneck pattern <laughs> cut up the top you know and then make this thing so we'll see i'm gonna be between wednesday and monday i've got a couple of days where i'm out of town and another day i'm not just not available to sew so um i'm gonna be busy so hopefully i can make this thing i'm, I'm determined i kind of have to i can't wear a bustle dress to an edwardian uh film shoot <clears throat> so <laughs> we'll see how it goes so i'll keep you posted
Joanne's, my mom and I. This is my mom. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to pick out lace to match the dress here. Here's the original, which uh, has nice scalloped edges. And uh, we're just going through kind of the off-white. So there's that option. And then what my mom picks. I really like that one, how it looks compared to that. Because it goes with the fabric you picked out, which is pretty close to that. Yeah, yeah. And I'll get into that history of that later. But um, yeah, I'm thinking it's uh, thinking it's mom's choice. Oh, so much pressure. <laughs> no, we're choosing yours. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so that is it. Cool. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is Thursday morning, and I am fast realizing that basically I need to make this dress today. <laughs> um, I am going to be out of town Friday and Sunday, and I will be um, uh, scheduled with something all day Saturday. So I might be able to do a little bit of sewing on Saturday night, but um, I gotta make this thing today. So I... Um, I've got the fabric I needed, and um, I'll talk about it in a minute as far as what type of fabric I chose. But uh, basically, I went with a um, a light uh, weave, or not light weave, but a um, a light duty denim. Um, and I was gonna choose a different color, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute too. So I've got that. I've got my buttons to match. So I think they look pretty close to the original picture here. Um, so it's kind of an ivory, maybe mother of pearl kind of thing. So, but this is the cheap version because mother of pearl I probably wouldn't be able to afford right now because as it is, I got this on minimal, the fabric on minimal discount. And then I got the lace all ready to go. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to hammer it hard. I got up very early this morning and, um, but I had a good night's sleep, so that's good. Um, so I've got to leave for work at 11.30 uh, today, um, and then, um, yeah, it's just going to be a crazy day. So hopefully I can finish it. I've got my fabric, I've got my lace, i got my buttons, got my tape measure. i um, got my pattern. The only pattern I'm going to use, um, the only pattern I'm going to use is this pattern. It's a uh, McCall's pattern, um, but it's this pattern um because I could not believe it I looked everywhere for a turtleneck pattern at Joanne's last night and I could not find it and um I don't know if people just don't want to make turtlenecks or what or they're afraid of it but um I needed one since this has such a high collar on it so I've got this one I'm going to extend the collar just a bit um and uh yeah so that's what that is going to be and as far as the skirt goes making skirts is pretty easy uh, especially with this kind of period it's you know big square fat rectangle fabric and gather it and slap the lace on basically um so yeah so this is made for you know this is a dress made in 1900 so the edwardian period uh began in 1901 so to get me in the mood while i'm sewing i'm going to be watching titanic uh the you know the movie from 1997 and um and granted it was you know 12 years later but um, in the year 1900, 1899 was still Victorian, but that that year was right in in that time period was when things started to shift fashion wise, and um, a lot of those fashions you actually see in this movie. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna be listening to that while I go and and uh, see how I do. So I'll talk about um, why I chose this particular lightweight denim and. Um, and uh, everything, but I'm just gonna hit it. So I'll keep posted.
The reason I chose this particular blue for the dress is because, well, not only the original dress was made out of this color, but it has a distinct history. Chambray is made out of a cotton that is woven with two different colors, blue one way and white the other. So my first thought was, oh, well then it's gotta be denim. And it, it is the modern equivalent of denim and, is, and at the time of Victorian, chambray was used for much of ordinary people's work wear. So that's why this particular dress dated 1900 was speculated to be uh, created by a working class woman and because of how often working class people used this blue fabric, that is where the term blue collar comes from. So I found that very interesting and I was thinking about using a different color for this particular dress like a, uh, from that same time period, like a lavender or a light mauve pink. I couldn't really not do a blue after I read about the history of the term blue collar and how that relates to chambray fabric. Okay, so just as a side note, I am using my serger. Uh, this is my mom's serger since I'm at home today, but um, I am using a serger just to overlock the edges so it looks a lot uh, cleaner and there's no raw edges on the inside. I like doing that whenever I'm making anything, quite frankly, because if you have raw edges, eventually they're gonna wear away and they can be irritating on the skin, at least I find it annoying. Um, but yeah, so that's what this machine is. So it's got four threads. I made it white since the, you know, denim has that white um, kind of undertone anyway. And it overlocks fabric just like this. And it prevents any fraying. It, um, it creates really nice professional seams. If you have um, any shirt basically has serging on it. If you look under here, right here, that's all serging right there. So that's what I'm doing with this. So um, typically back then they wouldn't have had a serger, but um, I just in this case want the garment to last longer too. So that's why I'm using a serger. Okay, so I am having a bit of a, not a problem, it's just very strange. So I've got the, there's a back yoke to this particular pattern that I've set onto the two front pieces. So, and the reason I haven't put the back part of the back on yet is because the lace uh, stops, you know, at the end of the yoke in the back and in the front. So, typically when you put a shirt together, you put, you know, front to back pieces, and then the sleeves, and then the neck, and then the cuffs, you know, just all of that. Um, but I'm having to kind of put the, stop and put the decoration on now before, um, all of the back goes on because once because the lace gets tucked in into that seam that back seam of the yoke um because the from the yoke down it's just all blue fabric so so there's no raw edges anywhere i gotta put the lace on now and get that tucked in and put that on you know cut it right along this back edge here and uh so it starts here goes up all the way over the shoulders and uh, then i'll be able to finish and put the rest of the back on but it's just very weird. So, all right, clock's ticking down. I've got about two and a half hours yet to go, so hopefully we'll can do it. So I've pinned it, the lace on. Ooh. And obviously I'll be taking this in so it looks a lot more feminine. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, I'll right <laughs> love sewing this lace on. I just haven't, I don't get that much chance to uh, be something this fancy, so this is exciting.
lace on. I've got the side seams sewn. All right, so there it is. So it looks pretty close to the original so far, but now I just gotta figure out where that lace ends, because right now it's right at my bust point, but it needs to be up a little higher, and I'm thinking about an inch. Two inches. Yeah, I think about two inches. So I gotta cut the lace back a bit and then stitch the seam gathering thing here. And um, yeah, then put the sleeves on. <laughs> Drum roll, please. All right, so here it is. So, and remember, it'll be all tucked into a skirt, but here it is. So, and I still got to add the buttonholes and the buttons. Um, so, it'll be, it'll end up better, <laughs> but it took, I wanna say about two, mm, about three hours. This is probably the most involved shirt I've ever made, and, um, I just used the basic shirt pattern and it's, it, it's, the steps are easy. It's just all of them was just a lot. So I'm going to work on the buttonholes later at work because my buttonholer is on my other machine and I'll sew on the buttons later. Um, and then, so now I'm going to work on the skirt. So as far as the skirt goes there, it's a two tiered skirt and a whole bunch of lace on the bottom. And for skirts, you really don't need a pattern. You just need to measure, you know, from your true waist which is if you find your belly button it's right that's where your waist usually is just right there that belly bar the belly button marks where your waist is or the you know smallest part um so in this case i would measure from here all the way to the floor and i'll try not to flash the camera again <laughs> um okay so let's see so belly button down to the floor is what 30, looks like 38. So I'm gonna make the final length to 40 and then shrink it up to match. So now I just got a lot of big pieces of work <laughs> to cut. So let's keep going. <laughs> I um, have made the majority of the blouse, which you saw, and uh, the skirt within 20 minutes is actually coming together really fast because it just, you know, took the length that I wanted, and then um, as far as the width went, I just kind of eyeballed it and added extra length for all the gathering up on top of the waist and on top of, um, top of the bottom tier. So I'm bringing it all to work with me, and if I can get stuff done, like in between client stuff, I'll do it. And uh, if not, I'll work on it tonight when I get home. So it's really coming along. I'm excited. Okay, so I'm at my office Thursday afternoon. And um, yeah, I uh, got my machine. About to put the buttonholes on the, sh on the blouse. And um, yeah, continue to piece until I leave. So I, because I got my Etsy orders uh, ready to be shipped and um, just waiting on my ride. So I thought I would, um, yeah, I thought I would, uh, hop to it as much as I can. So, and what I don't get done in here, I'll get done at home. So, cause I, I did realize I do have some time tonight at home. So, um, yeah, so here we go. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so just finished all the buttonholes. I have one on each wrist and then um, 11 down the front because that's what's in the original gown. Um, and there might be more past the waistband, but I don't think so. So, um, yeah, now next, so now the, the blouse is pretty much done except for the buttons and just trimming out all the threads and whatnot. So that's exciting. And um, so now is the skirt. So I've got the tears cut out. I've surged and in their tube form. So now it's just gathering pieces, putting them together, putting on the waistband, all that stuff. So that's next. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna give just a quick primer on how to gather, um, cause a lot of people will um, gap, you know, gather using a long stitch and then you pull, but then you have to deal with breaking threads and all that, and that's no fun. And um, my uh, my mom came up with an actually really great idea. Her and I sew together all the time and. Um, she uh, got sick of all the threads breaking, so you have to trim all the threads anyway, and it's just annoying. And um, I found it annoying too. But what I do is I find the ends, uh, all, all four ends uh, on the two pieces you're putting together, match them up, find the center of both, pin those together, and then continue to do this. So you just take, you know, your little, make your little cave. And then center of this and center of this, you put together and you pin. And then you've got two little mounts. And then you just keep doing that until you've got it, you know, as, as flat as you want. I normally get mine about three quarters of an inch tall because once it's in the machine, then I can push it all down. And you can make it into pleats. You can make it into little box pleats. Um, but, you know, with how um, the, the, the gathers in this skirt, they aren't that uh, structured. Because box pleats, it's when you take one of these folds, one of these loops, and here, let me see. You take one of these loops, and you press it, uh, you bring the edges, you bring the edges together like that, and then you press that just like that, so that, is what a box pleat looks like. So when it's just like that. But in this case, with this dress, the gathers don't have any structure at all. So I just get it to roughly where I'm happy with it and so all the gathers are even. And then once I get it into the machine, then I just shove and uh, make it flat down um, and then get it to just look nice once I stitch it. So that's a little tip as far as gathering goes. And um, yeah, ever since, uh, well, yeah, I, I can't go back to my normal way of gathering after my mom figured that out. So, um, and I find, and she finds too, and I find it too, that um, all of the uh, gathers end up more even than the normal way uh, without busting your brains out. <laughs> so um, yeah, so there's a sewing tip for you. a note to um after i did the um journey of the brown poplin documentary i got a lot of people i had a lot of people telling me oh i wish i could do that i think that's so amazing but you know i didn't i wasn't born with a sewing machine in my hands um i just learned all of this through just trying it 
and through asking lots of questions and you know, and just sewing, you know, as much as I could. And I just want to encourage every one of you out there, if you have a sewing project you want to do, go ahead and do it. I mean, the worst case scenario is you lose a little bit of fabric and, you know, you can always buy more. Um, but you can always make a practice item first. Um, that's what I did when I was 14. I was homeschooled all the, way, all the way through from kindergarten through high school. And we were studying the Civil War and she had been teaching me how to sew and we were taking classes together. And uh, when we were studying the Civil War when I was 14, I got very obsessed with Gone with the Wind. So I decided to um, make a uh, Civil War ball gown. Someone else that suggested um, that I make a practice dress first, so I'm comfortable with the pattern and whatnot. The dress, seen here, um, was so good. This was the practice dress. I, to this day, at uh, 10 plus years later, I have not made the quote real dress. The first one turned out so good, I just used cheap clearance fabric and um, no one has noticed. <laughs> and um, that was just so amazing for me as far as um, just getting out there and just practicing. And it was it was such a boost um, as far as in this as far as sewing experience go. Once you get that really good boost of oh I can actually do this, you can do it. It's it's not that hard. And I just want to encourage you to pick you know some project that you've been wanting to try and just try it. Just research how to do it. You can ask me questions. I'd be more than willing to help. Um, and just try it. It's so much fun just trying new things, especially costumes, because then you get to wear it and then show it off to people. And it's just so much fun. And find other people online or you know in person at local uh, groups or historical societies that you can wear these costumes to. And it's just so much fun. And it's uh, been a blast as far as um, the post uh, journey of the brown poplin too. So it's been fun finding all these other people that are just as nuts about Laura Ingalls Wilder and um, costumes and making historical garments as I am. And so I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who um, encouraged me and um, and gave me nice comments about the video. So, um, but again, I just want to encourage you to try something new and you can do it. I guarantee you can do it. Okay, so I'm making some good progress on the skirt here. So, let's see. So I measured my waist and then made the waistband just based on that. So, hey, we're getting there. Except that it's uh, this short. <laughs> so, here, let me bend the... Except that it's this short. <laughs> so, and don't worry, because there is the two-tier factor to it. So I've just got to put the bottom tier on and that's actually almost done. So I just got to uh, do the pinning to this. <laughs> so yeah, it should be plenty. So here's what the uh, bottom part of the skirt looks like. I have it cut and surged and I cut it, well the top I cut 20 by 40 times two. Um, and I sewed that together to make a tube and then I left an opening for the um, waistband. And then I did the same thing with this one, except I added 20 inches. So it's, um, yes, yeah, 60 inches times 20, uh, or times 20. <laughs> so I cut it 20 inches long uh, by 60 inches wide times two pieces. So then I made this very big tube and um, yeah, divided it, in, marked its four um, uh, points. And then I did the same thing on the other one. So I'm going to match up all four of those and then gather in. So that was fun. So you don't need a skirt pattern to make skirts, especially historical garments, because they're so easy. So um, yeah, you don't need patterns for it. You just make up your own. So it's uh, I find that a lot of fun. <laughs>
to note too about um, this uh, gathering technique. It doesn't have to be per it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to take it out and go, oh, where's the middle of that one and where's the middle of that one? Just eyeball it. No one's gonna know. <laughs> um, that's that's why I love sewing versus quilting. I love quilting. I, I make quilts all the time, but I just <laughs> if I want to be really accurate, I I'm not that kind of way with fabric. I would rather have it done than perfect. So it's been a very long day. It's um, 9.14 p.m. and um, I, uh, we're gonna be in the car tomorrow. So it takes the pressure off of me having to sew on 11, uh, 12, 13 buttons onto the blouse and then the three hook and eyes on the waistband. So I'm gonna just bring them in the car with me. But right now, before I go downstairs and watch Seinfeld, <laughs> I'm uh, going to so the um, second tier onto the top tier, figure out the final length, and then um, put the lace on. <laughs> so yeah, that's the plan. So I'm going to do that now, and then uh, yeah, hit the hay and bring the rest with me in the car, and then it should be done. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so got the bottom tier on. I actually think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna try it on for length here and see how it works. Um, okay, so for length, I think it actually is pretty good. I think I'll just hem it an inch and then be done. Pretty simple. <laughs> Okay, so the big reveal. So here it is. <laughs> so I um, have the skirt itself done. I've got the pretty lace edge on the bottom. I think it's as proportional as I can get. And I had like exactly, or about a yard of that lace left over from everything. So it's really poofy. It's uh so much fun to wear. I used to wear stuff like this as a kid when I was obsessed with Little House, but now I get the adult version. So another thing I have to do is uh, sew on the hook and eyes um, and then the buttons to the shirt. And I'm gonna do that in the car tomorrow. So, cause it, right now it's uh, almost 10 p.m. And uh, I've been up since just before 6.30. So I am so done <laughs> with the day. So I'm gonna go watch a, uh, um, stupid TV show or something. I don't know. And then uh, just decompress and then go to bed. <gasps> Kiki! <gasps> hey, baby! Oh. oh, here's your baby. Here's Kiki. Kiki, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good night. <laughs> Okay, so it is Sunday evening. I um, got the dress done last night and um, I tried it on. I sent the pictures to the gal approving the costume and uh, yeah, she loves it. And um, yeah, it works. I'm not going to show you. So uh, yeah, bright and early tomorrow. 
so tonight we're just laying low we're gonna probably watch a movie and hang out so and uh just like my cat's doing over there kiki it's been in my pop song all night so um yeah and then we're gonna all go up to green bay together and and then stay as long as we need to so that's the plan have a good night bedroom at Hearthstone Historic House in Appleton, Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, they've let me get dressed here since this is a late 1800s house. Okay, I'm a little wrinkly. I didn't have time to iron all of these, but it's the same kind of underwear. I think um, at the time for uh, late uh, 1899, 1900, um, the uh, corset cover and the pantalettes were all one piece, but I'm still going to this dress was made by a working class woman, so I'm gonna go a little bit older as far as the older um, garments go, undergarments go. Okay. Would they have cared whether they were ironed or not? Oh, probably. <laughs> but I don't have time today. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, 30 cents to the... <laughs> would have gone on before the corset because as you can see I can't move <laughs> I can't bend very well but um, yeah so and the only reason I'm wearing modern plastic socks is because it's gonna be cold where we're going so I don't want to have just plain cotton so these are a little warmer than my cotton ones so and I didn't yeah all right so and obviously their shoes would not have had zippers <laughs> but I can't afford uh, <laughs> I think you're okay. Okay. <laughs> as bad as the first one. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm out of practice here. Um, okay. So then pantalettes. All right. So. All right. So this would have been their underwear, this particular part. Oh. I'm gonna drive. <laughs> we'll find out. to the regular petticoats women would wear during the year for winter they had a knee length flannel uh, petticoat that would go somewhere in between the layers and I've made one but I could not find it in my costume room this morning so I'm going to have to stop all that <laughs> but it's not that bad it should be like high 40s today mid 40s 44 like that. I don't think you have to worry about it probably not so cool to get dressed in a room that a uh, late Victorian lady would have gotten dressed in too. It's really cool. Alright. So, I've done a big petticoat. Oh, this is my favorite petticoat. It feels like I can move in it. So, and typically, when higher end first class Victorian ladies would get dressed. They had helpers. Um, so they, you know, had it a lot easier than working class women did. And um, um, so that's why um, 
that's where the origin for buttons on opposite sides for men's and women's shirts came along. Because since men were right-handed and they were the ones normally dressing themselves and they didn't wor have to worry about uh, 50 layers, <laughs> um, that's why the buttons were down the right side for men. But because women had servants helping them who were probably right-handed, that's why the buttons are on the left side for women's shirts. And that's typical for even to shirts nowadays, too. So this is the corset cover. Because since corsets were normally boned with either a metal or whalebone that can poke through and potentially damage fabrics, this corset cover was one more layer of protection from punching through um, uh, to puncture the better dress. Now, this dress, like I said earlier, was, they figured, or the original that I'm basing this off of was um, probably created by a working class woman. So, but we don't have any um, houses around here that are 1899, 1900. So, Hearthstone's as close as I could get without dressing outside. So, little buttons. So there are 11 buttons because that's what was pictured in the original. the lace I wasn't sure I'd have enough for the bottom and I had like literally about a yard left over so Obviously the hairstyle isn't correct, but we're gonna go and pick out a hat to match. So got my white gloves. So which I'm very excited about also. I think I got these at a um I got these at the antique mall, didn't I? Right, I don't yeah. remember. I think it was. <laughs> I know what that was. Alright. So here it is. <laughs> Good, really good. So, leading up into the, leading into the costume room for uh, Hearthstone. This is where reenactors and actors get to borrow costumes for this. And uh, yeah, so this is it. So anything from shirts, blouses. Um, okay, so now a hat. Um, oh, goodness. Fancy hats for tea party guests. So the hard part is I gotta make my very short hair look Edwardian, but thank God we get to wear hats for this. Define so. Edwardian. Uh, Gibson girl. So like this looks the big puffy bun. And, um. All right, but I think I got it. That looks good. I love this hat. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see. Where are the notes? Um, yeah. So I think I think I have my outfit. So I'm excited. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha!
<laughs> I need to put this up. Here I feel, guys. Horse carriage coming right up. We just filmed here with Mr. Cavanaugh. <laughs> it was quite the day. I am uh, so exhausted, but I'm so excited that I was able to finish this dress in time. And um, today we did a lot of interesting stuff with the film shoot today. We uh, 
it was all women for the extras at church. And um, so there was nice drone footage. That was very exciting to work on. And the uh, director was a lot of fun. The shoot lasted about uh, three, just under three hours. And um, yeah, but it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot of Latin and um, sang uh, some pretty neat stuff. So um, yeah, I'll continue to be making historic dresses. So subscribe and stay tuned. Have a great day. to the pictures I think it is. So this is the hard part. I gotta make my hair, my very short hair, look Edwardian, so thank God I have to have a little hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it is Sunday. Um there. Sunday and um <laughs> do that thing again. <laughs> Alright, so leading up to the casting room where um actors and local be safe first. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it all again. Yeah, I know. Alright, so <laughs> and spit like a man. <laughs> no body is exactly except for um what's his name black actor the key submarine um Denzel Washington okay <gasps> blooper um <laughs> um all right so this is the scene Backlit there too. Even worse. Turn on. note to on top of my head. There. <laughs> okay. Oops. <laughs> okay, I'm, end of a day. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> to note, oops, I need the screen. All right. 